In this video, we're going to walk through a bare metal installation of the RxG software. At a high level, the steps will include how to download the software, create a bootable USB on Mac and Windows, and finally how to boot the server to the USB to launch the installer. Let's get started. The first step will be to download the software from build.rgnets.com. You will use your RGNets credentials here to log in. Once you get logged in, click on the ISO link. Here, you will find both .img and .iso files that can be used for installation. For the purposes of this video, we will use the .img file for writing to a USB. You will also notice that there is a FreeBSD 13.0 and 13.1 version available. If you're performing a new installation, it is recommended to go with the newer FreeBSD version. The .iso file is good for writing to a virtual machine. The MD5 checksums are also available for each file. The next step will be to prepare a bootable USB. Let's first take a look at how we can do this on Mac using a program called Etcher. A quick Google search for Etcher download should get you to the correct website, and then we will select the version for Mac OS. Once the file has completed downloading, locate the file in Finder and double click on it to launch the installer. You will then drag the Etcher program into the Applications folder. Now let's use Spotlight to locate and launch the application. When the application is launched, select Flash from File, and then select the file that you wish to put on the USB drive. Next, we will select the USB drive for installation. Given the size of this drive, it may prompt you to accept that this is an unusually large drive. Next, it will ask you to enter your password. Once the writing is complete, you can then remove the USB and proceed to the next step. In a Windows environment, I prefer to use a program called Rufus. Let's search for Download Rufus. And then on this screen, you have to be a little bit careful because there's a lot of advertisements. So be sure that you're selecting the appropriate download link for Rufus 3.20. And then if you notice here, this is an advertisement. So I'm just gonna click close on this. Now this is a really small program, so it's already finished downloading. I'm just going to click open file. Then it says, do you want to allow this app to make changes? And I'll click yes there. Do I want to allow application to receive updates? And I click yes there as well. Now I've plugged in my USB and Rufus has already recognized the drive. So at this point, all I need to do is select the .img file that will be written to the USB. Now it's prompted me here just to let me know that everything on the drive will be destroyed and on this drive there are currently multiple partitions and that all of those partitions will be destroyed as well. Now that the drive is ready, Go ahead and remove the drive and proceed to the next step. The next step on any bare metal machine is going to be to insert the USB into the bare metal machine and then power on the system. Now in my case, I'm going to be using IPMI, but this could just as easily be 
a console session or monitoring keyboard or a crash cart or something along those lines. Once the system is powered on, then the next thing we want to do is watch for some sort of option that allows us to boot it either into BIOS or into a boot menu uh, to allow us to select that USB drive that we've inserted uh, to install the RxG application. So in this case, what we should see on the Super Micro servers is an option that pops up that says press F11 to enter the boot menu. and We see that here in the center of the screen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press that on the virtual keyboard here. And now I'm going to go down and select SanDisk, which is my USB drive. After a few seconds of initial loading, you should then be prompted to start the installation. Go ahead and press Y to kick this off. Now you may or may not see this screen. Uh, this depends on whether or not you previously had RxG installed on this particular system. If you did and you're okay to override it, go ahead and press Y. This is another screen that pops up if the installer detects a previous installation. Go ahead and click OK here to continue the installation. Now once you've completed these steps, the installer will just run uh, until the installation is finished. And then you'll see a wizard pop up that will allow you to configure uh, the initial settings such as uh, the WAN or LAN IP addresses. All right, guys, and once you see this screen, the installation is now complete. Uh, we do have another video that you can uh, jump into to understand how to complete the initial configuration of the RxG. And uh, I thank you for your time today, and I hope this video was helpful. Have a great one.